welcome back to DIY Guitar Making. I've got a little bit of a late start on today. I was winterizing the property and, well, the, the half of the property that is the student lodging and everything else that I use for the part of the season where I'm teaching, the part of the year where I'm teaching classes. And since I'm now going into my off season with the classes, there's a lot of things I have to do around the property just to kind of get it together. And that's just the reality of running a business. There's a lot of things outside of guitar making that I just have to do, unfortunately. And so sometimes it's pretty late in the day when I actually get around to some real guitar making. And that's what I'm about to do right now. I am still working on the getting all the templates and various jigs and molds and fixtures ready for the parlor guitar model that I'm working on. I've got a exterior mold, an interior mold, which is for bending, and this is the shoe that goes with it. I just made a fretboard template yesterday and made a video about that. So you guys uh, either already have seen that video or you will. And I like to make a lot of just simple story stick templates like this. This is for setting up the waist, uh, not the waist, I'm sorry, <laughs> it says waist right there. This is for setting up the sides for bending and aligning the waist uh, so you know exactly where to place it in the side bending machines that I have over there, okay? And I actually made two of these because I want to be able to make two of these parlor guitars at the same time. And I made four of these so I can bend four sides all at once without having to wait for the side to cool and remove it from the machine. This is all because I really like the idea of making this model of guitar. I like parlor guitars. I think they're super cool. And uh, it's awesome that they're starting to come back into fashion lately. What I'm going to be doing today, among other things, is making another template, which is my bracing template. So it's a little hard to see here because it's in a very fine pencil, but I have my bracing pattern for the parlor guitar, and I'm going to make a template for that out of acrylic so that I can easily mark out my bracing pattern onto a top super fast. First, I'm going to stick down the plans that I've created to my light box. You don't really need the light box for this. You could just stick it to your workbench, but since I have the light box, it helps a little bit to see things. Then I'm going to attach a second piece of tracing paper over top, stick that down with tape, and I'm going to trace out, duplicate the pattern from my original example onto a new piece of tracing paper, simply because I don't want to have to cannibalize my original pattern in order to create the template. Next, I cut out the tracing with a razor blade, a little bit oversized, and then I use that oversized sheet to just roughly mark out about the size of acrylic that I want to cut. All right, so what's the best way to cut out this big piece of acrylic here? Uh, sometimes cutting out large sheet goods here in my shop is sometimes the hardest thing for me to do. I'm just not well set up for it. Uh, with a good heavy duty razor blade, I could probably just score my way all the way through this, um, but I can't find where my heavy duty razor blade is, so I was trying to use these little single edge razor blades, but it's tedious and it's hurting my fingers to do it. So I'm gonna try and do something else. This is too big, by the way, to fit in the bandsaw. And it's really thin and floppy too, uh, which presents some challenges as far as running it through power tools. I think this guy will work pretty good if this works at all. I actually think I burnt out this motor a long time ago, so we'll find out if it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this down and just keep this as a backer board and we'll cut it out that way. All right, I've got two clamps here. If you uh, can't 
Can't reach clamp all the way out here. The weight works pretty good. So I'm gonna put these two big old weights out here. We don't need this to go deep at all. Just deep enough to cut through this. There we go. Now that blade is just barely poking out. Plug it back in. And away we go. Hey, it worked. What do you know? All right, cool. Uh, well, actually, I don't think I went deep enough right here. Let me do one more cut. Oh no. Whoops. All right, it's terrifying. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And now it's not working again. Like I said, I think I burnt it out a long time ago. Or if you guys who know tools really well or equipment can tell me why it would sometimes work and sometimes not work. That's fine. I can just score my way the rest of the way through in this one area. Sweet. All right, now we're gonna stick this down onto the acrylic. All right, so to stick this down, we could use something like a Duco cement, which I don't have. We could use double stick tape, which I do have, but uh, it's a little bit expensive, the material, so why waste it? Or we could use this uh, contact adhesive. This one's by 3M. I think this will work. Haven't used this particular one for this before. I'm going to go ahead and open up a window in the door here just to get some ventilation. All right, double check the directions. Shake can well, hold the can six to eight inches. Okay, uniform coat, allow adhesive to dry until tacky and then apply sufficient pressure. Tackiness test. Yeah, it's a little bit tacky. That gets tacky quick. That'll do it. All right, let's let this dry outside for a moment. Center punch, mallet. I'm going to go ahead with these two tools and mark out all the intersection points and points of interest on the bracing pattern so that I can then drill out those positions with little tiny holes on the drill press. And that will give me a place to mark onto my soundboard uh, every time I'm building one of these guitars, okay? Once I have all those marks, it'll be like a connect the dots pattern. I will then, once I have them marked out on the top, I can then just connect those little dots with a straight edge to get my full bracing pattern transferred onto wood. Okay, so here's the pin that I like to use on the templates. I have these lying around. I have literally hundreds, if not thousands, of these pins because I use them to create the Radio Rosette Maker jig, which, shameless plug, the Radio Rosette Maker jig is a jig that 
I've personally designed and I produce here in the shop and sell on my website at ericshaferguitars.com. Basically the jig is for creating radial and offset rosettes, which if you haven't seen those, it's kind of the, this next level modern style of rosette. Um, above and beyond just your simple sort of Martin style dyed fiber strip rosettes. So if you want to up your Luthery game, check that out. Moving on. So that's why I have these. This goes right here, just like that. However, this material is very thin. It's only a 16th of an inch. It looks like about, so this doesn't stick well in the acrylic like that. So I'm going to go ahead and just with super glue, stick down this mahogany block right here. And then using the existing hole as a reference, just drill that right through the block so that we have something substantial for the pin to rest in. Doesn't need to be perfectly centered. Just gonna hold that for a moment and let it tack up. Okay, I think that's good enough to now put this weight on. And just leave that alone for a minute. Okay, now like I said, I'm just gonna flip this over and place this back into that hole. Drill right through the mahogany block. And there we go. All right, so there's the pin sticking out in the back and in the front. In case you weren't picking up what I was putting down earlier when I explained this, this pin is meant to align the template very easily. So I can reference this in the hole in the soundboard and then I simply line up this either this mark down here or this mark up here on the center line and that way I'm perfectly aligned and then I can go through and just mark out each hole all right so lastly I'm just going to cut off the excess here on the bandsaw that's all I got for you guys today I'll see you guys tomorrow peace If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericshaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.